Hi, this is Doug from Doug's Dog Trainer. Uh, this video is for the owners with a specific issue that uh, they have with Gary at home. So what happens is usually when mom comes home, uh, and I'm not sure if he does it with everybody, but when she comes home, uh, their door is, from what she explained, is all glass, and he's jumping up on the glass, being happy to meet her. And obviously, the last thing we want to happen is if you ever broke the glass, he could get seriously injured. And it's just not a good behavior. So, and he's not the only dog that does that. There are a lot of other dogs. Uh, again, when the owner comes home, or even like the mailman rings the doorbell or comes up on the porch, they go crazy, jumping up on the door. So there's, there's a couple of ways we can address that issue. One is to be very clear with him and give him and correct him for doing it. So when I talk about a correction or a version or punishment, there are levels to it. And the first level is just a firm no. So once a dog understands what no is, um, a firm no, and again, every dog's different, can stop the behavior of whatever they're doing. Uh, so Gary is, we call a soft dog. He, uh, he doesn't need uh, a heavy punishment. Uh, a lot of times, just a firm no gets his attention. But uh, getting back to the levels, so a firm no, with him doing this now for quite a few months, I'm sure he's probably been doing it for a while, and I'm not sure how it's been addressed. I'm just trying to get straight. Sorry. So with this happening over and over, it becomes a conditioned response, meaning every time he, he probably even knows around what time she comes home, he hears the the vehicle pull in in the driveway or into the garage or whatever's going on the second he knows mom's home he goes running to the door and he starts jumping up happy um or again it could be the mailman so what we want to do is at this point understand first what kind of dog we have again we have uh gary's a mini bernadoodle um he's not a highly confident dog at this stage of his life He's not a hard dog, meaning um, if, if you're stern with him, he's like, hey, boy, hey, buddy, I don't care about that. He, he, uh, he's more on the soft side, and he'll, he understands that. But again, because this has probably happened for months, it's become a classically conditioned response. And I'm sure if the children are home, they start, no, Gary, no, Gary. And, you know, kids, children have a high-pitched voice, and that actually can create more energy in the dog, more, more drive in the dog. And uh, they probably, possibly, could be actually reinforcing it because remember our reinforcers, the three reinforcers are treat, toy, touch, praise. So Gary and somebody going up to him and trying to get him or grab his collar, when they're touching him or they're talking to him, he can't distinguish uh, are you telling me to do it or are you telling me not to do it? So it gets back to being very clear with him. So the first thing I suggest is whenever Gary's home with an adult in the house that directly supervises him, supervises him make sure you have a leash on the dog. So a lot of my tra trained clients while we're going through training and if there's behaviors that are going on in the house, I always suggest having a leash on the dog. So I usually suggest go to Chewy uh, look up cotton uh, training leash and I think uh, it comes in 10 feet 15 it's lightweight and if it's too long you can always cut it down and then just take some duct tape and wrap it around the end because it's a woven leash and it'll come apart so let's get back to Gary so there's two ways we can we can address it but again we have to remember he's been doing this for a long time so one or two times more than likely isn't gonna stop this behavior one is to, to give him a fair correction and be clear with him that he can't do that. Or the other one is to use his, his bed. So he's got a, uh, a bed at home that they're also working on and have, I'll call it a bomb proof <clears throat> place command. So instead of him running to the door, when you work enough and you make the place uh, or bed obedience command, 
very, very important, and you're always reinforcing him for doing it, that could also be the other way of backing up. So let's discuss the first one, a correction. So, so the first level is a firm no. That's not enough. He's in an excited state, and he can't wait, and he's been doing this for a long time. So we know that's not going to be the level that's going to work. The second level is we call it spatial pressure. And think about when you when you had a puppy, and if you saw him going to pee in the house, you go to him, no! And that's spatial pressure going towards him. I don't like to use that for a correction because it could create fear or it could create defensive aggression, meaning you startled him, you go towards him, and he's he either is going to run away, which would be fear, or he's going to stay and growl or possibly try to defend himself. So I don't like to use that. So the next level, so again, we have firm no, we have spatial pressure no, then we have the next one, noise, sound. Uh, they actually sell a pet corrector, and it's just compressed air. So when you condition the dog, and there's a specific way I do that, conditioning the dog to understand that that sound, which could be scary, uh, with the no, he learns that the no becomes that sound. So you have almost like a next level up where once it's conditioned, so he interprets it as that sound of and that could be it. But ultimately, that's probably not going to work either. So the next one is a leash correction. Now this is where that level, there are, there are, uh, are different levels of using a leash correction. So one is using a flat collar, which he's on. The second could be a choke collar, training collar. So not only does he get the um, uh, the compression around his neck, but he's got the sound of the chain. And then the next one is using a prong. Again, the prong collar compresses completely around the neck, so you have more control with it, and you have you need to use less force to get the same correction or punishment as you would with a flat collar, because the flat collar, all it does is put pressure on the trachea. So that's probably the level that I'm gonna suggest that you use. So one, you have a leash on him at all times, when you can supervise him. You never put it on him when he's in the crate, and you don't leave it on him when you're not home and you can't see him or can't watch him, because again, we don't want him choking. There's a possibility the dog could get in. So if mom comes home at four o'clock, 3.30 or so, daddy puts on the leash and he kind of knows it's going to happen and at that point when the dog gets to get up and goes running, you give a correction. Now here's where we have to be clear about a correction versus pulling the dog. So dogs have what they call uh, opposition reflex. So if I'm trying to make him go forward, a lot of times the dog's going to fight and pull back if I try to get him to back up. Uh, so if I'm behind him, I'm trying to get him to back up, and I'm pulling on him, that's not a correction. That pretty much creates opposition reflex. He's going to pull into it. So what happens is, if the dog gets up, so we'll just say Dad's sitting in a chair, he's not too far from the door, he's got the 10-foot leash on, and Gary's just laying in his bed or on the floor, and what happens is he goes to get up, more than likely by the time dad or mom or whoever's going to give the correction um, is at the, the, the ability to do it, the dog's probably already at the end of the leash. So if I just pull Gary, I'm going to get him to stand, break that boy. So if I go, no, no, sit, sit. So I'll try to do it this way. So, no, sit, sit, good. So if I try to go back, like this, that's not a correction. All you're doing is pulling him back. So if he's at the end of the leash and the leash is tight, I'm going to go forward and it's going to be a quick pop. Nope! And that pretty much, if I get the right amount of, we'll call it force, because punishment is force, he's going to stop. If I go too soft, he's going to continue doing it. If I go too hot, he's gonna cry. He's the type of dog that will whimper, or, or possibly, I assume he will. So each person, when you use a correction, has to find the right amount of correction that's fair, that's firm, and it's clear to the dog that, whoa. So uh, 
what we want is that right amount so that he disengages from going to the door and then we give him a command back to the bed. Yes, use your marker, yes, reinforce it. There's a good chance for the first week of practicing that using a correction that he's going to continue trying to get up. So you can place, he's going to try to get back up to go run to mummy. And again, a correction is, now break, a correction isn't, isn't pulling him back like this because again, that's not a correction. So if he's taut on the, if the leash is taut or tight, he's already at the end of it, we want to move forward and it's a quick pop. Nope. And all we're trying to do is get his brain to disengage something he's done for months and months and disengage from it. And then we give the command what we want, whether it's the place, whether it's sit, whether it's down. And then ultimately, we want to teach him the response we want when mommy comes home, not jumping on the door. So again, you have to remember, he's been doing this for a long time. Dogs don't learn like humans. There's a good chance you're going to have to work on that correction in a new behavior for at least a week, maybe 10 days. So hopefully that's clear. Again, a leash correction, it's not just pulling this way, because again, you're, you're creating opposition reflex. So if my leash is tight like that, I have to go forward and then again back. Now, I don't have to be very hard with him. Again, he's a softer dog. So, and the other thing is what owners usually struggle with is they struggle with their thinking with their heart. I don't want to hurt my dog. Well, if you allow him to keep doing, and whatever you're doing now isn't working, there's a chance that that glass could break and he could get severely injured. So. We want to, one, if you're going to use a correction, know that the correction comes from giving and then popping, and each person has to find that right level that it's clear to them that i got to stop what I'm doing, and then, again, you have your leash, so you can use your leash pressure that I've taught to either put him in a set, and be very clear, he's going to keep trying to get away the first few times. He's going to get up and want to go to mom, or he's going to get off the bed, whatever you're going to do. And you want to reinforce what he does with the new response you're trying to teach. Use your marker, yes, give him a treat. And again, be very clear. Be very clear. What you allow will continue. What you stop and teach a new behavior will become the new response. And again, through classical conditioning, it takes <clears throat> repetitions, consistent repetitions, consistent repetitions. So if he's been doing this for six, seven months, don't expect it to go away, go away one or two times. Be clear with it. So that's one way, is correcting that behavior of running to the door, using proper leash work, using the proper level of correction, and then teaching the new response you want. And again, your leash allows you to stop him from going to the door and putting him where you want. That's one, correction, teaching a new response. Or the other one is where he's got a fairly decent bed command, a place command, is you already have them set up. So the bed is wherever dad's sitting. And again, I would suggest that two adults do this. And after I'm done with this uh, other way we can handle it, I'm also gonna go over on how to prepare them for those things. So we wanna teach them through those distractions. Sorry, that's my washing machine. We wanna teach them through those distractions that nope, you gotta stay on your bed. So ultimately the bed is someplace where um, the other adult is sitting. I don't know where your doorway is, where you enter. Uh, you have 10 feet of leash. The bed doesn't have to be right by your feet. It could be someplace you're prepared. Maybe even uh, mom texts, texts her husband or, or uh, calls him. Hey, I'm five minutes out. So now he's prepared. Again, you want a loose leash. So you don't want to have a tight leash because, again, it creates opposition reflex. I want him to be on his bed. So... I'm sitting in my chair at home. I got a 10 foot training leash that I bought. He's laying on his bed. I don't know if you can see anybody over there. So he's laying in his bed. So Gary is laying in his bed. Nope, down. 
So I know mom at this point is going to be coming home. He's going to go to get up. All you do is, again, it's just a correction. So he goes to get up, correct quick. So again, not tight leash. So if he's already tight, you're going to go forward. And it's a quick pop. No, nope. and again, I don't correct the dog on, unless I unless it's warranted. So I'm not going to do that. I'm showing you, explaining without actually giving a correction. So again, he goes to get up. Nope. Place. Go back down. And again, at this point, he's going to be super excited. So he's going to not listen to you. So this is where you don't want to be yelling, but you want to be firm with him. Your firmness comes from your leash and control to the collar. So I'm going to correct him. I'm going to say place, back on the place, then I'm going to tell him down. And I'm going to continually, continuously do that until mom's in the door and she comes over to see Gary. Now he's going to get up and fight it. So there's a couple of steps you got to do. You have to work on your place command and start adding distraction. So you can actually practice that at home before actually going through it. So mom is outside, dad's working on it. She goes to knock on the door, ring the doorbell. And again, dad is quick correction. If he goes to get up, no, nope. place, recommand. Yes, mark it. You can, you can pet him, praise when he does it. If he goes to get up again, nope. And again, if, if he's not listening, because he's probably not going to listen the first few days you do this, because he's going to be in that excited mode, mom's here, use your leash pressure. He knows that the pressure straight down is to get down, straight up with a finger on the butt is to sit, and that helps him when he's in that excited stage of not listening to what you're trying to say. But again, it gets back to teaching him exactly what you want, remembering that he's been doing this for months, so it's going to take time. Don't work in anger. Don't personalize it. Be clear with them that now I have to teach you something different versus what you've been doing all that time. So that's one, that's the two ways I would handle it. I would work on the place command, place command, place command. I would add little things uh, that might get them to jump off the bed. So mom's sitting maybe in the living room, dad goes to get up and naturally he goes to get off his bed or uh, the kids come in the room again you just nope place put him back on here mark it when he's on here um and again building up that bomb proof place command that he knows he can't leave until he hears break break so see he's not listening this is opposition reflex he's fighting it break break yeah good boy so you have to work your place your bed Every day, I do 10, 12 reps a day. You can break them up uh, two time periods during the day, maybe six in the morning, six at night. Uh, start adding things that naturally get them to get off the bed. You always have the leash on them and somebody else is working with them. So if he goes to get off the bed, it's a quick correction. Place, yes, down, leash, boom. He goes to get up, nope, down, yes, and again, continuously work on that if you allow them to get off the bed because you you're not comfortable using leash pressure or using a correction then there's really no other option but to continuously um, allow him to do that which i know you don't want him to do but the place command helps with everything else also so if you have dinner and he's a beggar or he's a counter surfer while you're cooking if you have a bomb proof solid place command um Send him to his bed, and you've worked on all the distractions. So a couple of things. you worked on distractions that get him to get off the bed, and you clear with him with your leash. Nope. Down. You reward that. Uh, the other thing is you're working on place, break, and you add in duration. So you add in more time that he's going to stay on that bed till he is break. And last but not least, <clears throat> wherever his bed is, uh, slow your, your distance has to be built up to teach him to go to place so we start at first a foot two feet away then we add three or four feet and we slowly do that so that once he understands to get the place then we'll work further further away till we get to a doorway then we'll practice that so at the doorway he can still see the bed place he goes to it again mark it um reward so you can pet you can give a treat so we're doing touch praise or we're doing treats. We're not using a toy. That's not, we don't have time for that. Uh, but that is an option for later on. 
And ultimately, at some point, then you can get behind the door so that we'll just say if your living room has a doorway into your kitchen. So you've worked enough reps, 10, 20, 30 reps of from the door place. He does it. There's, there's no luring, no leash walking him over to it. Then you can go behind the door so now he can't see it. And again, it gets back to when you change the picture of what the dog sees, go back to the beginning how you taught him. So you may have to say place, walk him out past it, point to it, and you do quite a few reps from that. And then at some point, he just picks it up going to it. So the same thing with recall. Um, you know, that's the other issue is come when called. And, and he does it with me too. So you have to work on your leash and you have to add distance so that no matter what, it's fairly easy for him to do this. Gary, come. Yes. Well, what happens is when he's 20, 30 feet away, he's like running around. I'm not going to listen to you. So in order to, to help him, again, with changing a picture, with changing the distance, you have to make sure you have a long line on them. And if you're 20 feet away, you have 20 feet of leash. And ultimately, when you say, Gary, come, you're using it. Gary, come. You're using your leash to reel him in. Yes. And then you give him his treat. And again, good boy, buddy, good boy. Every time he comes, make it a party. Good boy. Because we want him to feel the happiest when he comes to you, right? So if you get mad or you're angry, Come on, get down. Good boy, place. Or uh, you're not making it happy for him to come. What's going to happen is when you really need it, he's going to blow you off. But if you do make it happy, so you don't always have to use the bed. You could be in the kitchen, practice a couple, you know. And again, yeah, good boy, Gary, yeah. And, and you give him a treat and you pet him. So this way, when you do need that recall and he's out in the backyard someplace or he's in another room, he comes. But remember... Dogs learn through consistent repetitions. And I'm not talking 10, 15 reps. You know, the studies I've read are closer to 200 reps that it takes a dog to understand the verbal cue. So he's learning. All right, though, back up. Back up, though. So this is buddy. So he's learning me back up. Gary, come. Back it up and a little bit of leash pressure. And then ultimately, okay, good. Place. And ultimately, we want Gary, come. No leash pressure, no no work. Good boy. Place. Watch out, though. Thor, break. Good boy. And then, okay, so now I have it. Thor. Hey, Thor, get out of there. You're on camera. Don't be a homo. Go over there. Go place. Good boy. Place. So when I know I can say, Gary, come without any. Good boy. Gary, come. No backing up. Nope. Gary, come. Then I can add distance. Place. Good. So now I would add another leash on. And again, I do two or three more feet. Gary, come. Yes. And again, 10, 15, 20 reps of that. Then I'll move again. But always have a leash on him so that he comes directly to you. Yeah. Uh, Thor, come on, buddy. Go place. 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 Good boy. Down. Atta boy. So those are the, that was just the recall because I know we had discussed that, but uh, getting back to the problem jumping at the door. Remember, that's for anything that's a problem, jumping on a counter. So you kind of set him up to fail. He goes to jump on a counter, you get your leash on you, it's slack, he goes to jump up, you correct him. No, for him, no. He's like, whoa, and he disengages. That's what we want. And when a behavior has been going on for a long time, you have to remember that that's a conditioned response. It's gonna take time, consistent repetitions of changing it into a new. So the first one is, again, leashes on him. You got a good 10 foot leash. Uh, he, he gets to go wherever, wherever he's laying. Somebody's got the leash, preferably an adult right now. He goes to run to the door. You give him a, a, you know, the correction amount of force that is necessary to stop him from Continuing. You want him to like, oh, crap, what happened? And disengage. And then teach him something you want. Sit. Uh, down. Onto his bed. That's one way. Or the other way is you, you're setting him up and you're practicing it before you start working on the door is you have a solid place command. And you add little distractions like maybe one of your children running by or having a ball, you know, teasing them. 
Uh, but again, you want to add those distractions slowly. So the level of distraction should, should slowly uh, be added into his training, where if he goes to get up, nope, place. And then you reward that, that he stays. And don't forget, you also want to teach him at some point, when he's done good, give him the break, man. Break. Yeah, good boy, buddy. So hopefully that answers it. Punishment, correction for it, teach a new behavior, or teach the solid place command that he knows no matter who comes in or comes by or what happens, he can't leave that bed until he hears free or break, whatever you're going to use. I started with break, or you give him a different um, command, like Gary come. And again, that's not going to go away overnight. You have to work on it. So hopefully that answers anything. Hi, bud. <laughs> what are you doing? Huh? Hopefully that answers anything. Any questions you have? And it helps you to uh, resolve that issue. Okay? Thanks for watching my video. Bye.